Okay, guys, so just a little update as to where we're at. We have gotten both valve covers off. My wife pulled that one off, and she pulled this one off today. She pulled that one off yesterday. Pulled this one off today. Um, and we've gotten all the valve covers off. Let me get a better view to the side. We got all the valve covers off. So I've, if you can see, like, the edges, I've already cleaned on the top. And on both sides of the valve cover. This one is really hard to get to. Like, those two bolts in the back, those last two bolts in the back, they're just, like, really hard to get to. Um, I just, like you said, the wiring harness is kind of made in a horseshoe shape, kind of like. It starts over there and it comes all the way around and goes back up. So, I just did disconnected everything from the right side since it was easier to get to. And... The fuel rail's not there, so I just did that and then pulled all the wiring harness out of the way, as you can see right here. And I used zip ties to, as you can see right there, I don't know if you can see those black zip ties. I used those zip ties to pull the harness that away. And by doing that, it exposes the bolt. Let me see if I can show you. So show you so right there that bolt and that bolt are the hardest ones to get to and this little black contraption right here which all of your wires are in it's made of plastic it's very stiff i just used zip ties to kind of pull it out of the way so that was our plan and it works we're gonna start putting everything back together everything has already been cleaned let me show you those are my coil packs right there. I got them numbered. Now you don't have to number them like I did. I just did it to, cause I like to put stuff back where it came from. So as you see my plenum spacer is now clean. Um, uh, the top of the plenum is clean as much as possible. The guy that did my, my, um, my powder coat, he was not very like, like Look at that. He's not very good at it. Or he just didn't give a shit to do mines the right way. So he kind of painted underneath the plenum, which is not good. Um, I tried getting it off as best as I could, but you do more scratching more than you are helping it. Okay, so this is the valve cover painted, ready to be put on. Um, I'm going to put the gasket maker i mean the gasket on here with the ultra black gasket maker oil resistant um i've used the red rtv like forever but there are there is a chance that you could cause a leak because it's not oil resistant as much as a product that's like exactly oil resistant so let's get started i'm going to put it kind of right here at like the 90 degree angles. I'm not gonna do very much, just a little bit in each corner and maybe right here. And yeah, we're going to let it sit. So when we put it, when we go to install it, it won't fall out. see I applied the permatex kind of just like on the perimeter right there all the way over here to this side and uh, I didn't put any on the back side um, the manual doesn't instruct that it just instructs you to put it up front like that so 
that's what we're gonna go with. to put the coil boots back in as you can see i have my coil boots sitting right here and they're all numbered um now i just i didn't go like i said earlier i didn't go by the actual firing cylinder order i just numbered it in my head just to make sure i put the coil boots back in the same holes so i just went one two three four five six simple um if you want to go by the firing order then and number it, then you can do that. Yeah, let's get started. Let's put this in here and bolt them down with a 10 millimeter bolt right here on all of your little brass fittings. All right, here's number one. And you can tell which way it goes, and that's why I numbered them too. So you can tell which way it goes because the bolt hole has to match up, and this will be facing the right direction. So when you put your harness back, it'll fit. And another thing too, I've learned in the past, um, with messing with my motorcycle in the past, when you go to put your spark, your coil, your coil boots back, and they don't sit flush up against the valve cover, it has like a gap, and you're like, what the hell? You know, and you can't figure out why it won't sit flush. It's because the valve cover is not flush. Stop what you're doing and go back and look at this valve cover because if it's not flat, it is not gonna, the boots are not gonna sit in there flat. And I promise you that. <laughs> I forgot to put this on. Um, now you can get it on with the valve covers already on like this. I'm still in the process of putting it on, but you can get it on there. Um, now I recommend you kind of do it as you're doing the valve cover. It'll be a lot easier, but yeah, we need to get this on. So I'm gonna go get the wife so she can help. She got it on there. Um, so yeah, I think the next best thing to do would be to swing the harness, take the zip ties off, and swing this harness back around here and start plugging everything back up. be a very good time if you haven't done it this would be a really good time to use your products like this one would be good for you know your electronical plugs I mean I see some of my plugs that have uh, 
shit ton of dust on it. So this would not hurt. It quickly dries, plastic safe, helps prevent contact failure. I mean, you would hate to put this car all the way together and something's not working and then you think it's broke, but come to find out it's just not getting a connection because it's dirty, so. <laughs>